All right. So I'm going to ask you like 80 questions in okay. 60 minutes. So your job is to be as concise as possible. Okay. Can you do it? We'll, we'll try. try. Do your best. Yeah. She'll have the hardest time. You could probably determine that. Well, Depends on the, question the is. goal is to cover as much material okay. as possible okay. in, a right. short, in a, okay. in a fixed right. amount of time. Okay. Um, all right. So here we go. Are you guys ready? Let's start from the top. So if I go like that, that means he's talking too long. Or okay, vice versa. Ahead. How are you going to tell her? Yeah? Okay. All right. Uh, belief in God. What is the belief in God of remnant of you guys? Very traditional. Uh, um, traditional lectures Trinitarian. On, lectures on faith would be the best way right. to look at it. Which we says believe what? in God the Father. Yes, we do believe there's a Heavenly Mother. Um, and we believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God. Is God a, a resurrected corporeal being? Yes. Anthropomorphic, meaning like uh, a man, a, a resurrected man. Yes. Is God a resurrected man? Yes, but he man? has a body of burnings. So there is a slight difference between the bodies, but body of burnings. Yeah, well, he has that, uh, yeah. so much glory. Well, so much glory. That would take a while to explain. So we can't do that. In but, precise, but but yes, he exalted. is a he is yeah. exalted man. He's a, yes, he's okay. an exalted right. man. Okay. Um, and Jesus is his literal son, meaning somehow God and Mary made a child, and that's Jesus. Yes. yes. And Jesus is resurrected. For yes. You. Yes. Is that right? Yes. That's correct. And Absolutely. Jesus is, okay, but Adam is not God, or no. is God Adam? No. No. So you reject no. Adam God theory. Adam is a son of God. But right. then what about Adam we God theory? We do reject Adam God theory. That's coming from Brigham Young. My belief is okay. Brigham Young distorted a truth that Joseph Smith was trying to convey. He didn't understand it and twists it into this other thing. Michael, the temple, teaches you as Adam. He's obviously progressed to a point of some sort of godhood in that he's in performing, the, helping to perform the creation. So there's, there's some confusion, but he's a son of God. Okay. <laughs> we may be doing that the whole time. All right. Um, okay, so Jesus did, um, Jesus was resurrected, I'm assuming, and did, did he suffer in Gethsemane for all our sins? Sort of like all these sins are on the scale. Jesus had to suffer to, to make it all okay. Yes, but the, okay, the best description to understand is in the book, Come Let Us Adore Him. It is also, Denver just gave a talk in Atlanta, Georgia, on a website called 500, uh, I got to give this to you because this is, uh, this is important. The, um, Christian Reformation 500 the number 500 years dot info. So Christian Reformation 500 years dot info. On that, he just gave a talk to the Christians. And in that, he shares the portion of seeing what happened in Gethsemane um, in that talk. And that would be what I would say to you if you want to understand what we think. That that, yeah. He, he explains it. But yes, yeah. we do believe he suffered for okay. our yeah. sins. Um. Uh, Bible is the Bible still like with traditional Mormons translated in 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 imperfect ways. Bible is not perfect; has flaws. True. Bible right. is not perfect; has flaws, but we accept it as canonized doctrine. But we favor the Joseph Smith inspired translation. Yeah, because we're. I, I'm assuming you'll get to. Point we'll, where we'll talk about yep. Joseph yeah. Smith. Yeah. Yep. yep. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, as far as, um, let's see, the Book of Mormon, is the book is the Book of Mormon the most correct book on the face of the earth? Like Joseph said. Yes. Yeah. I believe that. Okay. Yeah, I do. Um, now we're having man, a, that a man will get nearer to God by abiding, abiding by its, its precepts, precepts than than, than any by other, any other book. book. That's so what it teaches, yeah. what it teaches and how to come to God, that is the most correct book. Does, does that make sense? And for you, the most important part of the Book of Mormon is what it talks about seeing Christ, about striving to see Christ and to know Christ. True? I think the whole, I, I think that's what the whole book is bearing testimony of all the way from Luke, 
Lehi down to the end of, of Moroni's, they're all bearing testimony to come unto him. So. And I've heard you ask other people, do we believe? Do, do they believe uh, in the historicity, I don't know if I'm saying that right, of the Book of Mormon? Yes, we believe it's actually, there's actually a Lehi, there's actually a Nephi. So how do you deal with like the horses and the steel and, you know, the DNA problems and all the problems? This is the way I look at science. I've, I've dabbled into that years ago, right? So you're talking so long ago that I wouldn't even have answers to give to you of what I came up with. But bottom line on science, science changes all the time. They, they, they think they have an answer and then in 15 years you find out, oh, well, we were actually wrong on that. We find out something else. I would never stake my salvation on those kind of temporal things that to me they don't face me can be proven later to be inaccurate yeah. but but i'm not up on it enough to sit there and give you you know well here's what i looked up and found the answer to does that make sense yeah i mean i it's kind of like butter how long have they been telling us that butter's bad for us now they've just reversed it and said okay butter is actually good for the heart we've just reversed that da, 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 you know so I go to the doctor, give my daughter a polio vaccination. Oh, this is totally safe. Five years later, oh, we don't give those anymore because we found out that the only cases, you know, you know what I'm saying. It, it's, I listen, but okay, with, a, with one eye closed and one eye open. So. Okay. What about the Book of Abraham? Because the Egyptologists have translated the fragments that remain. The word Abraham doesn't even appear. There, there is a whole explanation to the book of Abraham again about five years ago I looked into that extensively I became satisfied I looked into the answers that Hugh Nibley gave I also took a class from another uh, ancient religion professor that gave me satisfactory answers and um, I believe there's also physical answers for that so no we believe in the book of Abraham and I actually um, even if even if Joseph Smith received it as a revelation, looking at the the transcripts, but I don't I don't think that. But that's even a possibility. But for me, the the power of the book of the proof and evidence of the book of Abraham is the words in the book of Abraham. When I read that, that book is filled with so much light and truth and knowledge. That is a very invaluable book to me. To model yourself after Abraham. He is the one to say, I want to do what Abraham did. He sought God earnestly in a state of, of apostasy all around him, and he found God. That, that book helps clarify some questions about adoption with the fathers, the ancient fathers, etc. I, I, I think it's very credible. Too, too much depth in there to be, it's, it's not made up. Yeah, yeah. However, Joseph got it. So you're just not concerned about history or science. Yeah. yeah. I've, I've read it. I've, but I'm, I've, I'm not I've, about the things like that, about horse and still and all that type of stuff. I mean, they're discovering things all, all the time about wars and how they made things. And There's just, there's but, just but always I, yeah. a, an answer that's around the corner. And um, like I say, on all of those, at the point where I looked into it, I was satisfied you're, with the answer. You're basically you saying your spiritual feelings are what you care most about. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 That's and fair. you're not going to let any alleged evidence get in the way right. of your spiritual right. conviction. Right. Well, I you... haven't heard anything that has shaken that yet. Yeah. But you're not open to it either. Yeah. I've looked oh, into yeah. it. I'm open I to honestly it. did. Oh, okay. At the one point, yeah. I, I looked into the book of Abraham stuff so that I could answer other people's for, questions. For instance, it's the church has purported so for a long time that you know that. They, they believe that the, the Book of Mormon history actually was mostly in Central America. And then, and then that group came out to know, we, we believe it's up in North America, and here's the artifacts and stuff like that. And I listened to it with, and I think they're probably right. I think most of it was up in North America. But, you know, it doesn't really matter to me that much, but I do think it was in North America. Okay. Yeah. Um, back to this teaching about... Um, about the purpose of life to be to know Christ just really briefly. And I don't even know if you've thought a lot about this, but the way I've thought about it is 
um, it, it sometimes hasn't made sense to me that we all lived with God before we lived with God and Jesus before. Mm -hmm. Then he sends us to this earth and kind of, you know, blinds us, gives us this veil of forgetfulness. And then the whole purpose is to come to know him when he's knowingly constructed this veil of forgetfulness. And there's so many people in the world that never get a chance to really believe in Jesus because they're raised Muslim or raised Jewish or whatever. So much of our belief is tied to how we're raised. Um, and then, and then just like, really, this is just biblical, but the idea that God's going to keep you out of heaven because you didn't end your life with the right beliefs and specifically believe in something that he did everything he could to hide from you. Any evidence of? And the, and the really the pinnacle, the pinnacle purpose of this life is to see God or see Jesus face to face. I'm like, why isn't it? Okay, why isn't the pinnacle? Like, wait, I'll wait, just, yeah, I'm yeah. Almost, yeah. Why isn't the pinnacle of judgment like how many hungry mouths did you feed? How many widows did you clothe? How how much suffering did you alleviate? And whether or not you actually believe that there was a God or believe that Jesus literally existed or not, or really saw him versus just believed in him or felt like you might believe in him. Why is it belief in, in, in these teachings and then this physical witness that's just so important to God versus like living a Christ-like life? Okay, the Lectures on Faith ask, ask basically three questions. Joseph Smith said, uh, you've got to ask yourself, do you really believe that there is a God? And if you do believe in God, then ask question two, do you, do you know God's attributes, his characteristics and attributes? And then number three, do you have a conviction that you're on course to becoming like God? When you say see God, to me that mean, doesn't just mean to see him, it means to become like him. The whole progression of not just this experience I'm having now, but throughout eternity, is to improve myself, to, to gain further light and knowledge. I believe this is just one stage of eternal progression. And when, I, when we talk about seeing Christ, we're not talking about all, all as we want to do. We're talking about if you're going to see Christ, that means pretty much you've got to Take upon you his attributes. Take upon, yeah, his attributes become like him. So it's becoming like him. And it's this becoming is, like him. You but hit, you can do that without even believing in him. Yeah, but you hit a key point. Well, not really. No, because in the end, there's there's more going on. But um, the, Wait, don't you think there are people in the world that are more Christ-like than remnant people? Like, oh, absolutely. Who don't even believe in Christ? Uh, absolutely. Okay, so why But I is believe it? all good comes from the light of Christ. I really believe that. I believe well, then, that every... then we're not doing anything. Then we're just... No, Then because... Christ is doing stuff no, through his no, no, light. No, because you're, you're either responding. You have the agency to respond to that light. He inspires it, but he will never compel you to follow that. You have to make the choice to follow that. And it's a difficult to, to tread the path that Christ tread. Number one, we would live the Sermon on the Mount. Or the ser and the Sermon at Bountiful, which takes your discipleship on an entirely different level. That's where instead of just fornicating or committing adultery being wrong, it goes to the heart and thoughts, right? Instead of just murdering being wrong, it goes to don't even be angry with your brother. Forget. Everything gets right. I mean, and, and you are treating your fellow man. You are doing good to those who do evil unto you. Um, so, and, and you hit on something else. One of Christ's final parables was the parable of the sheep and the goats, where basically what he says is, uh, did you feed, he goes to these people that claim to be his followers, right? And he says, did you feed the, did you feed me when you saw me hungry? Did you clothe me when you saw me naked? And they go, oh, why Lord, we would have done that if we had known, but we never saw you like that. The whole point of that is your fellow man is how, how you treat them is what God is looking to see. 
if you are really like his son or not. So, so you're right. There is a lot. It is about becoming. Becoming as he is, is what you're seeking to do. But it doesn't just happen in, wow, I was down here for 80 years and everything hinges on, this is rounds of eternity. The, the scriptures talk about eternity upon eternity. And there's lots we have to learn. Do you still believe in three degrees of glory? Telestial, terrestrial, and celestial? We believe that... that well, you're sitting in the telestial. This is... T- this, <laughs> this life is the telestial? or yeah. This world yeah. right. so, is okay. celestial. Yeah. And, but it'll be transformed according to traditional... And then it will go to a terrestrial. Mm-hmm. What? It, well, it w- when, it when you move into Zion, the millennium, that's a terrestrial oh. state. Oh, that's different than what I... That's like the Garden right of out. Eden. Oh, really? What were you taught? That the telestial, that the earth will become the telestial kingdom, but it'll be transformed into well, the telestial kingdom. If you don't kingdom. know, if you haven't figured this out, you live in hell right now. <laughs> this is the kingdom of the yes, adversary. I live in hell. This is the kingdom of the adversary. He has come down and, and taken over this world. The, the temple used to say, well, now go with Adam and Eve into the telestial kingdom or the world in which you now live. Yeah. There's a lot more going on. This and this is why I say ground. you need to listen to that seventh talk by Denver, given in Ephraim, where he picks up on the King Follett discourse. Joseph Smith was trying to give a hint of what's really going on. Okay. Is there progression between kingdoms in the afterlife? Can someone go from the terrestrial to the celestial? You're asking a question that would take, you said a short answer, and in order to lay any groundwork work on that. Well, ultimately, it's either yes or no. Eternal progression me, would mean that uh, there's a cycle of creation called an eternity, and based upon the conduct that sh- occurs there, you have a space in between there where you're not experiencing something like this and then you will continue on in some experiences that the help you to yes. progress further the answer is yes see but but not in the it's sense either yes or no it's not but it's not the lds description of the plan of salvation is very simplistic and it throws people off, off. Right. of what's okay. really going right. on okay um all right uh as far as joseph smith goes i think the the biggest problem people have with him is the polygamy. I already know that Denver and others basically don't believe that Joseph Smith ever practiced it. Is that true? Right. Is that what you guys believe? Well, yes. Um, and I believe that there's not a, enough evidence to convict him either way. And I never assumed that until Denver educated us. And I, I looked into it and I, I can never find any statement from Joseph Smith where... Well, someone said he was lying. He was hiding it and lying. Well... Well... But, you know, all the DNA and and, and all the false accusations that were inconsistent and, 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 the, and the fact that he always said he only had one wife. And yes, and, we believe... We believe what you just said. And Emma denied it. And there's there is a fantastic paper... Uh, just to save time, because I could go over some of the facts from it, but a fantastic paper. I don't know who wrote it. it it's anonymous, as far as I know. And um, have you read Joseph Smith's monogam- monogamy by uh, Denver? I'm I'm just aware. I'm aware of the arguments. Case. You, you ought to read that paper, the research that he did. It's There's phenomenal. another one, and I believe that on that website that I told you about earlier, called ZionsReturn.org. I believe that uh, that is if this is going to be linked on there somewhere. If it's not, I'll tell him you need to put this up. It's called um, Joseph Smith's Monogamy. Monogamy. So I can't say that. Sorry. Exploring a counter narrative regarding plural marriage. I don't know who wrote this. It's, it's anonymous, as far as I know. There's no name attached to it. But it was written after Denver first came out with some things. It really surprised me saying, hey, listen, you better rethink this polygamy thing. It's not what you think. Um, somebody else wrote this paper. It's about 50 pages long. Fantastic. They really try to approach it fair mindedly and show you here's the facts. Here's the different ways that this 
could be looked at. Here's what the trouble is. And there has been a lot of altering of documents that have been done by the church after the death of Joseph. The contemporary documents do not give sufficient evidence to uh, say that Joseph was practicing polygamy. polygamy. Now, he was doing something, but I believe we believe that uh, was something yeah. else that 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 yeah. what it, it related to what we call the law of adoption the and dynastic has, ceilings has yeah. to do with organizing the family of we God. We believe a lot of that was misunderstood and, yeah. and construed into something different. And then you had the Cochranites that were influencing the church that were practicing polygamy. They came down, and so it, it gets muddled. And so even though, oh, what about Fanny Alger? When okay, here's a great one on Fanny Alger. Okay. So, so yes, there's, there is something going on, but see what I believe, it, law of adoption would require a, 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 a priesthood ceremony to do that. that. That's what I believe. You're saying there's no sex. Right. So right. what I'm saying yeah. is... So when Oliver caught him with Fanny... It's all it is is, is a ceremony is taking ordinance. place that's an ordinance. But it's, clothes are on, no yes. touching of body parts. And here's something yeah. really interesting. Joseph and Emma have nine children, right? So base, we know for sure Joseph could produce children, nine children. Fanny Alger later marries somebody else. Fanny Alger has nine children. She can reproduce. So though Joseph can reproduce and, and so can Fanny Alger, if there were some relations going on, it's very interesting that, you know. There's no offspring of any. No support. offspring. There's no DNA evidence of anything. In fact, they had proven, and I should have refreshed my mind on this, but they had proven uh, all the supposed suspected descendants that could have possibly been Joseph's to be false, except for there was this one line they were unable to do. And then in 2000, I think it was related to a female line and they couldn't, the DNA test wasn't there. And then it finally came out in 2016. It was done and it proved it, this suspected that it was like the smoking gun, this person for sure. You know, the testimony on this is so strong that we know this has to be a descendant of, of Joseph. This this will prove it. And it turned out false. So there's just nothing. And, and a genetic professor at BYU, just a couple months ago, uh, I have a friend who's a student at BYU, and he brought this very fact up talking about DNA and just said, this is so improbable if Joseph was doing this that there is nobody genetically, no no DNA evidence of okay. any children. Um, and, and I'll just say, for me, one of the most compelling uh, sort of testimonies for polygamy is the fact that the RLDS Church spent over 100 years denying that polygamy happened. Um, the, you know, when it, when it sort of went up against uh, the LDS Church, the LDS Church felt defensive because the RLDS Church was claiming polygamy never happened. So the LDS Church, uh, you know, has all these depositions with all these former wives of Joseph. And a lot of these women did did bear testimony, um, uh, allegedly, that, uh, that they um, were wives of Joseph in very deed. But the most compelling part is that the RLDS Church staked over 100 years of its reputation on Joseph not practicing polygamy. And ultimately for them, who they had every reason to reject um, polygamy in the 60s and 70s, had to even buckle under the overwhelming amount of evidence that they read that he probably did. I don't expect you guys to have a response to that. I'll just say this. For me, because my grandmother that married Brigham Young would have been one of those that you know, probably had a deposition taken on her. I'm not sure, but here's what I what I really think is happening. The contemporary evidence is really all you can rely on, what's written at the time. Joseph always denied it, so did Emma. Everything that is trying to confirm it happens after Joseph is dead. He is not able to speak for himself. The only words that he ever gave for himself were denying it, right? Now the church can say, well, Joseph was lying. Well, that really do you, you believe your prophet is a liar um but here's the thing when they're taking these depositions 30 to 50 years later after you've been living under brigham young who has convinced you that what you're doing 
is required for exaltation, right? Can you imagine the mental game? Now you've you're been they're living, under paress, under duress. You're you're under confirmation bias where you have to make your actions. You look back in life to to confirm what your belief system is now. And that is how I explain. And this paper that I recommended to read, he goes into a lot of this kind of thing. So That's I, I would say if, if we're a jury, I don't think there's enough evidence to proclaim him guilty or innocent. It, it actually is, is really quite unknown. But I favor uh, Joseph's testimony, especially uh, just months before he died. Um, Especially understanding that there is the thing called the law of adoption, which would explain very yes, logically yeah. what was going on. Right. Who wrote what became Doctrine and Covenants 132 then? I believe that the first portion of that, Joseph did receive a revelation on eternal marriage. But it is shown that that document didn't even go public until the 1850s, after they'd been living it for quite some time. And there is evidence of doctoring things. There's a, there's a, in fact, a statement by Joseph Smith in his journal that his scribe writes where he's talking about, um, in fact, I'll just read what he says. He says, um, this is out of his journal, gave instruction to try those who were preaching, teaching, or practicing the doctrine of plurality of wives. So Joseph's telling his scribe to write this in his journal. On this law, Joseph forbids it and the practice thereof. No man shall have but one wife. And remember, they have DNC 101 at the time that also says, because there's been accusations of this, one, we are not involved in this. One wife, one husband. Now, the thing that's interesting is, in the 1850s, when the church historians are trying to finish off the church history, because when Joseph dies, it's only up to like 1838 or something like that, there in the 1850s, they've got Joseph's journals. Some scribes are transferring what's in Joseph's journals. And you can see this in the, in the document that I referred to. Um, it is left, they've, they've left space after Joseph says that he forbids it. They cross that out. On the side, they say, to be revised. In the margin of the paper, they go, to be revised. And then they leave space after where they cross out that Joseph said to forbid it. And they fill in, in the handwriting of the person that wrote to be revised, they fill in language from 132, which is doctoring the contemporary documents after the death of Joseph Smith in 1853 or 54. So they're really, even one of the church historians from quite some time ago said that there was altering of documents that went on. So 132 is unreliable to me. What about, what about William Law, who was a counselor in the First Presidency, coming out with the Nauvoo Expositor, basically bearing testimony that Joseph was, was practicing polygamy? William Law is disenfranchised from uh, the church. I, I, I don't have a problem. If I'm going to take William Law over Joseph Smith, um, I'm going to go with Joseph Smith. I don't have a good answer for you right now on that one because I haven't That's been fine. looking into William Law. But. What about William Clayton's journals? He was Joseph's scribe. Apparently he writes about polygamy there. Again, same. same. So it's kind of like science. You're, you're basically... No, no, no. I said if, you, if, you're, if you're in a court of law, you would never have enough evidence to convict Joseph uh, uh, one way or the other. And, and also, you know, right? It, it, we don't even have a modern document where Joseph Smith ever addressed polygamy, ever even really talked about personally, it. Personally, personally. So like at the end of Joseph's life, the last two years of Joseph's life, there were supposedly, according to the record, 25 men who had, uh, I think there's a total of 42 women that had been sealed to them or something like that. Okay. Of those... The only supposed births are four, before Joseph's dead, right, is four. Now, you've made that point, that there's no child, children. Well, what I'm saying is, after Joseph dies, all of a sudden there's children. And what I'm saying is, it is not beyond my belief that some of the men who carry on with the church 
after Joseph did think that there should be polygamy. Is it possible? That, is it possible that some of the brethren were practicing polygamy while Joseph was alive? Yes, I think it's possible um, that there were some secretly doing it, but I do not believe Joseph was. Okay. Does that make sense? Sure. Um, so Wendy writes, I think they're only honoring evidence that supports their point of view and dismissing evidence that challenges it. You don't have to answer yeah, that. No, that's, I, that's fine. No, no, no. We're, uh, we're saying that there's not enough evidence for either side. That's why I recommend that so one I paper because it goes to both go sides. So I am going to go tie to the runner, you know? Well, I, uh, I'm a fan of, of William Law. I, I feel like he had a lot of integrity. That's just my reading of his life. So I'm not inclined to want to dismiss... William Law, because I think he paid a big price for what he did, and but but you know it's okay. People have different beliefs, and these are yours, and this is your reading of the history. It's it's, but it's reasonable. I to, think one of the things that Denver pointed out is that he personally just pushed out all the evidence and all the, and he just went with the Joseph Smith. There was a, another fellow that did that that helped him with the research after Brian Wells or something like that. Brian C. Hills. Brian, Brian C. C. Hills is actually believes Joseph was a polygamist, a polygamist right. but, but he, he, he he singled out all the statements, just centered in not on the the others, just Joseph Smith and all all of all of that information. But I'm anyway, just, I'm just thinking Heber C. Kimball, Parley P. Pratt, you know, um, Brigham Young. John Taylor, Wilfred Woodruff, Lorenzo Snow, these are all contemporaries of Joseph. And they all would have would have also believed and taught that Joseph was practicing polygamy. Okay, right. So they yeah, would have all but, you been, at, but I'm I'm telling you what I believe. Okay, that's that's all I can do. Yeah, is yeah, what yeah I no, believe. that's fine. No, that's fine. Can I approve it? Not on this no, case. No, that's fine. You know, yeah. I, and I and believe. like yeah. I say, there was something going on. For sure. See. And, well, and you can become confused. But maybe confused. Joseph didn't know, or Joseph well, didn't approve. Well, there was this law of adoption going on. And what I'm saying is, it was a very misunderstood. Joseph, Brigham Young didn't even understand it after Joseph is gone. And he, and I think it's in winter quarters, he has a dream where Joseph comes to him and he asks Joseph, I don't understand the law of adoption. I don't understand what's going on with it. And um, that eventually becomes our, you know, what we're doing with the temple but it was not it was not understood what that teaching of joseph smith was really about and doing and um so if it is from that teaching and that principle that i believe the confusion over polygamy arose and when you don't understand what's going on with it and you misunderstand it or you have uh, temptations of the flesh which cause you to want to, in, to misunderstand it, whatever it was, after Joseph is gone, he is not there, and he didn't answer Brigham Young. He diverts the topic and just says, just tell the saints to get the spirit. In other words, you don't even have the power and right anymore because you don't have the fullness of the priesthood to know and understand what the law of adoption is about. Okay, that's fine. Um, what about uh, the temple? What do you guys believe about the temple ceremony? Are you, is the temple, okay, you're building a temple. Well, when, Lord, when, we're raising funds. when the Lord, what we're doing. when the Lord is prepared to gather his people for the establishment of the new Jerusalem and Zion, there must be a temple built there. That's very clear. That command yeah. will come at some later date. So, I would anticipate quite some time. So a new Zion, a new Jerusalem, separate from independence, is yet to be right. established. And is Denver the official mouthpiece of God? Could that revelation come through you or through you? Well, if it came through me, I would be a deceiver. Why? Because... <laughs> I certainly haven't stood in the presence of the Lord to get any kind of that kind of instruction. But it, it could have. come through you. Could it? Mm. In, in, in your movement, 
is Denver the one that ends up calling the shots or can other people receive revelation for the movement? Absolutely, everybody can receive revelation. Absolutely. For the movement. Um, that kind of that kind of thing, where Jerusalem, where, where Zion will be, when it's time to build the temple, does that have to come through Denver? How would, how would I explain this? The way I would explain this is there's been two cities of Zion, two Zions that have been established so far on the earth, right? One and God's was, not doing too well. Wait, one was because it's very hard. It's very few people can rise up to do what's required. It, it requires serious repentance. And um, so you have Enoch, right? And you have Melchizedek. We don't know much about either one, but what we do know is that they were teachers who called the people to repentance and they were authorized from God to do so. God is a God of patterns. I anticipate and would expect that he will follow a similar pattern. It's not 50 million people that can decide when, where, how, what, Zion. It will be through an authorized servant. But until that happens, you don't know. Until it's happened, it hasn't happened. So when and if it happens, then we'll be able to tell you who exactly that servant was that okay. made that call. Okay. Does that make sense? It does. And um, I've, as I've read through your websites and literature, I can't find... You know, just boldly, Denver suffers our prophet. He's the prophet. There's, it's, it seems like, and I think he's even, I think I read a Salt Lake Tribune article where he said he doesn't even like that term, if I'm remembering correctly. So straighten that out. You, you've talked about the term prophet being anyone who's stood in the presence of God or Christ. Um, but what is Denver and what isn't he? And why don't, you know, what keeps you all from just saying, yep, he's our prophet? I, I or do you say that? We've already answered well, that, I thought. Is Denver Snuffer your prophet? Well, like what well, we've talked about this before, do I, has he stood in the presence of God in the councils of heaven and been authorized from God to deliver a message? Absolutely. Is he the head of an institution or a church? No. Is he inviting all people to rise up to know God? Yes. Is he also emphasizing, I am nothing special. I am just like the rest of you. We are all equals. Zion can't even happen unless there are all people who participate in Zion rise up to know the Lord. They're all, they're all people who have come to that obedience to God where they've taken on them his attributes and, and have received that blessing from him. So now here's one other thing, though, that I will say. The power of Joseph Smith's message was that he declared that the heavens were opened again and God was doing a work. The power of the message being delivered by Denver Snuffer is that God is moving his hand again for the second time to finish off what was begun by the restoration of Joseph Smith, but never finished and cut short because of, because of the failures, which we talked about in 124. Now, the other thing I will say is, in order to have faith on earth, faith in God, you must hear and be taught the message of God from one who is sent. That is taught in the New Testament. Um, faith cometh by hearing the word of God and hearing by one who is sent. An individual is sent, not from another man ordaining him. Peter never ordained Paul. Paul was ordained from God. A messenger is sent when they have been sent from the presence of God with a legitimate, authorized message. That, I would very much say, does describe Denver Snuffer. Does that make sense? But again... Do we worship him? Do we sustain him as some kind of leaders? Absolutely not. In fact, two people approached him and said, hey, can we sustain you at a conference? And he's like, what are you talking about? Absolutely not. This is not, I don't want to be sustained by anybody. This is, this is, I may have an assignment. He would say, I may have an assignment from God and I am doing that, but that makes me no different than the rest of you. 
that makes me in fact a servant but I want to be with fellow servants we're all servants of the Lord and handmaidens I would assume do you do you have a sense for how many people in the movement have seen Christ no no ten hundred I do know that there's some who have made that claim um, I I probably have heard about 10. I don't know them all personally. I do know, other than Denver, I do know um, three that, that I know that I, the Spirit has said to me, yes, that's true. Okay. And is there... You're answering all the questions. Sorry. Okay, I'm being quiet. Okay. Kirk. What? Is... <laughs> um... You answer this one, Karen. It's going to be hard. Um, Make it hard. Teach them. Teach them. Teach them. <laughs> is, uh, is, is it rude to ask someone if they've seen Christ in, in the movement? Do people share their testimonies and say, I've stood in his presence or whatever? No, it's rare. It's rare. They don't go out of their way to share it for the most part. Have you talked to, have you talked to people who have or claim they have? I, I've heard one or two people claim that they have, but... I didn't get the feeling that it was accurate, to be honest. So there's some that may claim it that yeah. it may not be true. Right. But, but that's, that's my are, feelings. Maybe it is true, but I, I didn't sense but that it was. That's what people are striving for. That's a main you've, thing. You've got to yeah. realize that when you have an insti uh, some, you don't have an institution, you have a gathering, and, and you have a teacher that's teaching, uh, but there, there's you're going to get all types. And I, I think the funnels, I think the gospel is like this, right? And it's a funnel. And, and they're bringing a lot of people in that are interested in listening to an authorized messenger. And, but I think as time goes on, it will narrow and narrow. And but narrow. to see Christ, you know, it's a, it's a many years journey. Does yeah. that make sense? I mean, for a lot of people, they just barely were awakened to the concept of learning to conform their life so that they could be able to do that. And um, the truth is, I think that for a lot of people, it may not be until they're in Zion, but they will have qualified by learning to become and do what Christ has modeled for them. And I don't know if that answers that. Sure. Our are you guys comfortable sharing whether you've sought that experience and had it? Are you, is that a rude question for me to even ask? Probably not comfortable at If we point. said we're not comfortable, then that would maybe imply that we have. I have not. You're saying you have not? Seen Christ? I okay. have not. I have not. Well, have I had some real interesting experiences? Yes, but I have not. I have not seen Christ in the flesh. But I did have an experience in 2014 where I was studying for a release society lesson. Actually, and it was on the patriarchal fathers, and it was very, very close to the spirit. And um, I was pretty much promised that I would. And I feel that um, I have confidence in that, you know, promise. So you're kind of living for that. Um, oh, sorry. You're kind of living for that day. Yeah. Because and striving for it. Striving. Right. Striving. Okay. Because I know it requires, for me, um, it requires the sacrifice of all things. And when you've sacrificed sufficiently to, that the Lord will see that you will serve him at all costs, then in his time he'll he'll do that is there are there like people in the movement that are sort of generally understood to have also seen christ and it's kind of like oh he's he's seen him no they uh, they haven't seen him but they have i don't believe so i don't think so no. so for you guys you Not don't that know, I know of no are there 12 apostles no, no why no. aren't there 12 apostles that's a new testament church that's a, that's an organization the 12 apostles was well, Joseph Smith had 12 apostles. Right, right. 
because the restoration got modeled temporarily after the Testament. early Christian church because, I don't want to get too deep, but I'm just going to say this. That's because with the death of Jesus Christ, the Jews were given their, okay, here was your opportunity to get the gospel, right? They reject it, and it's going to go to the Gentiles now. The Gentiles aren't truly the house of Israel, and so they had to be modeled with a system which patterned after the house of Israel, and meaning Father Abraham, you had Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right? Three. And then you had the 12 sons of Israel, and then you had 70 descendants who were brought into Egypt of Israel. So this is the pattern of God's family, what's yeah. coming off of Abraham. Because when you go to the Gentiles, you're not really house of Israel, God still has to order his people in a way. And so I'm probably doing a terrible job explaining this, but this is why you get this concept of a first presidency, 12, and then 70. It's a Gentile way of, uh, of it's a, a way of ordering, organizing Gentiles to mimic but, the house of but Israel. But we won't see that again. No, we are not going there again. We're, we are going back to, the paradisical to order. what was in the first patriarchal millennium. Order. The patriarchal order. The religion and priesthood that was in the time of Adam and the great patriarchs. And Joseph Smith prophesied that. Okay. Um, are these the latter days? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Is there a sense... Is his Denver or others given a sense for how soon Christ's return will be? No. Any hints of that? But for me, my personal, like me, the clock's ticking. In your lifetime, you think? If a people will repent, if a people will repent <clears throat> and take the Lord up on his invitation to climb the mountain, climb Mount Sinai symbolically, then absolutely. How many people need to do it? Ten, like not the, thousand, five thousand. Why don't the you come with us and find anybody. out? The <laughs> offer is to anybody, but there may be few who respond. But it doesn't matter. Numbers is it doesn't 144, matter. One hundred forty-four thousand. What do you mean? It doesn't matter. God's got billions of children. <laughs> and you know what? And He will take care of all of them. This is this is a <sighs> worldwide family of God that he's worrying about. Your questions actually are counterproductive because you, of two reasons. Number one, you're asking people that have not stood in the presence of God and have. I would be much more comfortable if you would, if you would read what uh, Denver has, has written because most of these questions can be answered and I think you'll be thoroughly impressed because I believe the Spirit will bear bear witness to you. But the other reason is is that you're asking some pretty deep questions that would in order to come up with a logical answer, it would you would have to lay some yeah. prerequisites. You okay. know. It it probably doesn't okay. make any sense yeah. what okay. we're saying even. Yeah. Okay. But but the second coming is coming. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And you don't Lord, think it is? The, Sooner than the later. second coming is coming and the Lord <laughs> must prepare a people. Okay. Otherwise, the earth would be utterly wasted at his coming. You know, I, I, to date, I have never met a true atheist. I have never met anybody <laughs> that doesn't actually believe in God. I've met a lot of people that act like they don't want to believe in God. But I think it's a natural, inborn, innate, instinct in all human beings to know that something's coming maybe something's coming okay um you you mentioned that the temple at, okay again one more time oh okay so as far as has <clears throat> anyone ever given a revelation apart from denver that applied to everyone in the movement I or does all we've had a situation where hasn't happened yet yeah. Has anyone ever claimed a revelation and people started to wonder about it and then Denver had to say, nope, that wasn't no. A legitimate. No one's ever challenged. No, and you know what? He would never do that. He what do you would mean? never. He would never. If someone never... challenges authority, if someone said, oh, I, oh, oh, wait, I know when the second coming because... is or 
Or I know where you the temple's what? supposed to be. Or you know what he, he would, would say? say? I don't have it. <laughs> no, you know what he would say? What would he say? He would say, you have to figure out for yourself. Go to God. To and the members. you find out. To the members. Yeah. You yeah. find yeah. out whether that is accurate or not. I'm not going to sit here and tell you. You got your connection to heaven. You go ask God whether what that individual is declaring is true or false. So he doesn't come excommunicate to people. Oh, no. oh no. There's nothing that to excommunicate him from. From yeah. What, what you... <laughs> okay. There's nothing it, this is total equality, no strong man, no leader. It is so foreign to our concept in the LDS church. We are so institution leadership oriented. Look Vertical. up the ladder. This is not. This is Horizontal. Everyone okay. must be leader. There cannot be an institution. There cannot All This right. must be the individual rising up. Okay. Uh, I read somewhere that, that there's like a, over a thousand, but I've also heard tens, you know, over 10,000. Are, is the number being underestimated? Is it really only a little bit more than a thousand? Is it less than 2,000 or does well, there's know? No, there's no real way to ad identify people, okay? The, but you can have a sense. Well, no, it, it, it's actually, there's people all, all over the world. I was just on a committee and I was working with some people in England, a person in England. And um, what, what, I'm, what I'm saying is, is that there's no way, t we haven't taken a census. We haven't taken yeah. that. Do you have a sense? What's your guess? Oh, I... I as far as people that really believe in all mm -hmm. this, I, I would say it's probably close to a, a thousand plus. <laughs> Couple thousand. Couple thousand? Not yeah. not ten thousand. Uh, there, th I guess there could be, but uh, I just really wouldn't have any way of knowing. A lot of people don't want to identify themselves. Yeah. For they don't want to There's... be. How many of you are active members of the church? There's no way to know. Do you know active members of the church? Yeah, yeah. I do know yeah. some that are still active. A lot? A few. Few. Most that are really, you know, that I know are have are not. Are not. Um, but I actually do have some friends who are. Okay. That, that's great. It's who fine, are. you know. And that's totally great. In fact, in fact, you could be Catholic and believe in this. You could you could be a member of any denomination. And that's what I was telling you. Denver just went and did, you know, how he spoke first to the 10 talks was to the Mormon corridor. He just gave three talks, September, October, and November, one in California, one in Texas, and one in Atlanta, which were to the Christians. That was declaring the message to the Christians. And, um, you know, he, he basically invited them to follow the doctrine of Christ and uh, that right now where we're at is kind of mimicking original Christianity where you're meeting in homes and, uh, you know, collecting your own tithes, using it for the poor among you, that kind of thing. Um, so, but it's to anybody. And one of the things he said is if you're a Baptist and you want to be a Baptist, but this message resonates with you and you want to heed the invitation to be baptized by one who's authorized, you can receive that. You're not under any obligation to leave your religion. So that's another thing people need to understand. Just because a lot of Mormons have doesn't mean that that's required. Does that make sense? Yep. How is authority conferred? Who has authority? Is LDS authority legitimate right now? When, a, when someone's baptized into the LDS church, is that recognized by God? Not since 2014. Remember that general conference yep. I told you about? So Snuffer said and any ordinance mm -hmm. performed after this date is yeah. not legitimate. In the and he talks God. about that in one of the talks, that the Lord came to him and, and uh, he is now done with that. But if you were ordained to prior. priesthood prior yeah. to 2014, right. your ordination is valid. Now, whether you connect with God, priesthood is really, you do have to have an ordination but priesthood is really your connection to God. So what degree or how effective or what power is found in your priesthood depends upon your connection to God. Okay. And so it's just laying on of hands. Is there a Melchizedek priesthood? All priesthood is, is the priesthood. same priesthood. 
priesthood. So there's no distinction between Aaronic no. and Melchizedek? No. Church think made it, that up. Think well, of it as one well, thing. One continuum. Think of it as one thing, and as you, you can have a little portion of it down here, or you can have a fullness of it up here, which is to know God, right? right? right. And depending upon your heed and diligence, that's that you one give, that it's unfair to answer. It it's very answer. difficult. Yeah. yeah, it's a very long question. Okay. But that's uh, a simple answer. Women in women in the priesthood. Well, the um, man answers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Let's see if he gets this right. <laughs> she will correct me. I'll give you the. The header, and then she'll give you the details. Quick, okay, quick answer. So. We're running out of time. Okay, be, because of the fall, because of Eve's decision, Demer was told that uh, women will not be able to hold the priesthood until at a later time, and, and then it would be reversed. But something unusual happened. Do you want to explain? And that's as far as the public ordinances, meaning baptism, sacrament as a condition of the fall until the millennium. But one thing that's different than, uh, the, in, in, with us is there's a difference between priesthood and faith. Faith, through faith, you can lay hold upon all the gifts of the Spirit, including healing. So I, as a woman, can, if I had a sick child, I could lay hands according to my faith with my husband on my child, which is something Joseph Smith taught, right? Because that's a consequence of faith. It's not a a priesthood thing. The other thing is because my husband and I, we are, we have, a, I hate to use the word authority, but our family is our kingdom, right? That's who we have a responsibility over as husband and wife, mother and father. I could stand with my husband and bless my children if I wanted to get them, you know, they're going, they have a dilemma they need a blessing, a comfort, counsel, whatever. I could stand with them. I have you done that? Mouth. Have you I, done mother's I have. blessings? I have. How does that feel? Great. But she hasn't performed ordinances but I don't, that, are, that right. are for the... But healing, the yes. I have. Have you done yeah. healing ordinances? I have, yes. But not how was that? I mean, great. I just... Let me say, how was it? I mean, I... I she well, doesn't baptize. She doesn't administer the sacrament. You know, right. there's... No. Does it bug you that you're being punished for what Eve did? No, because, you know, Denver just wrote another paper called The Holy Order. And what I understand is when we are not in this celestial condition and we move into a terrestrial condition of Zion in the millennium, and then we'll receive the temple that's there, um, then is when you'll have the true understanding. The, the priesthood that's connected there, you know how I said that paradigm from the Aaronic to this fullness? That's when you're dealing with this fullness, and that is all about the man and the woman together. And I have no, um, no worries, no concerns, no, I don't feel ripped off, gypped off. I, I feel like I get what God's doing, and I don't have a problem with it. Blacks in the priesthood, was that of God to take it away from them? Are there people of color in your movement? Are they welcome in your um, movement? Could you know, a black person? We're in Utah. Could a black we're in person? Utah, there's not very many. So, have you ever seen a a, a black? We had a black member? woman come and visit our but, fellowship. But but you've never heard of a, a someone baptized? Oh, you know what? There is yeah. some up in Canada. Yeah. I went yeah, to a youth is. conference and there were some yeah, um, kids is. that came down from Canada. Baptized. Yeah. yeah. Can they yeah. Be, can can they get the priesthood? Can blacks get the yeah. priesthood? Yeah. 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 It's. Okay. I, was I have that not of God heard of when anything. it was taken from them? Um, I will, you know, Denver does a whole, in Passing the Heavenly Gift, the one that he gets excommunicated for, he does a whole chapter where he lays out the history. Quick answer. Uh, What's the quick answer? Black and, black, blacks and the priestess. No, it's misunderstood what was going okay. on. Okay. What's so, un, what was going on is misunderstood. Okay. Yeah, because Joseph easiest. gave blacks the priesthood. So. That, right. Elijah, okay. Abel, I, I okay. get all that stuff. Yes. Okay. That's it. Um, law of chastity. Law of is chastity? masturbation bad? <laughs> no comment. I haven't taught. I have heard no him say comment. anything about that. These... No, has that been taught? I'm just no, saying. It no, it hasn't been talked about. No, no, what has been talked been about taught. is obviously fornication. No premarital sex. No premarital sex. And no adultery. And no adultery. In the heavens, are, is there polygamy? No. It's, it's monogamy I, in heaven. That, that's what I believe. 
But yeah. I, I don't think he's addressed that, but my personal belief is... You're asking is, some things that I have a strong opinions on, but that's about where But there's at. no revelation about that type of stuff. On some of them, but, the, but you got to go get your own revelation on some of these. Okay. What about uh, the scripture? Talk about you have scripture. And I went and looked at it. There's so, so you have like 180 something sections in your Doctrine and Covenants, right? This is the exciting part. All right. This is what's been going on for the last six months. Yeah, or tell eight us. Months. Update us in a minute. <laughs> okay, the one minute update is whenever God begins a new work, you have to try to bring to the best of your ability all of his words that have been given to you that are known. And you have to uh, make a, mo a most correct, oh, the word's not coming to me, but the most correct, fulsome version of that. The church never did that with what Joseph Smith gave them. They never took the, the inspired version of what Joseph did with the Bible and actually made it available to the saints. They put some in the footnotes and some in the back, but there never was a complete compilation. And Joseph called that the fullness of the scriptures. And if without it, the church would fall, it would fail, okay? And the church never did do that. What we have done was um, a group of individuals separately and apart from each other, both were inspired to begin making a better collection of what Joseph had done. And then on their own, they were, they were eventually brought together. And we have labored for months to try to find every correction change that Joseph made to the Bible and put it in to one continuous as it belongs, right? One continuous thing. We've taken the Book, book of Mormon um, based upon the 1840 edition, which is the last one that Joseph made corrections on. He did the 1837. The LDS Church has been using... The 1841 edition of the Book of Mormon, which was based on 1837 corrections, we are using the 1840 edition to give the most accurate, uh, up-to-date what Joseph was doing. We have taken the Doctrine and Covenants, and um, and I apologize if I'm flubbing this up for people out there. Just give us not, a sense. But, we won't hold you. But the, the Doctrine and Covenants, what we did on that is we're trying to say... Like I told you, there's been lots of things where Oliver Cowdery added stuff in after the fact, after a revelation, or somebody altered this or whatever. Anything or that stuff we added cannot, after Joseph died. Right. Like section 132. Right. So anything that then we you, could then find. Then you have the punctuation problems that were not put in under, you know, inspiration. It was actually put in by the, the But I look, section 132 yeah. isn't there. Right, yeah. right. So well, there is a section anything, 132. But if there's it's not. any question about whether this is Joseph Smith and Joseph Smith only going to source documents and Joseph Smith papers, tons of research has gone into this, that uh, there, were, there were revelations that were added in that are authenticated to be from Joseph and there are things that have been taken out or portions of a section taken out if it cannot be directly connected to Joseph or Hiram. And then there's a bunch of like, there's, there's a bunch of revelations from Denver. Some of it are, are talks that he's given, excerpts from talks that you've referenced. Sometimes there's blog posts, like it'll say from the blog of Denver Snuffer, there are sections out of his blog, which was weird. There, there's a little bit I weird. I think there's one or two <laughs> where when he gave a blog, and this was not up to Denver. Denver was not deciding that. That was not Denver's decision. Right. In fact, right. it was the people voted on what would be in there. There were maybe one or two of those that yeah, Denver was it, told by the Lord that has to go in I'm just in saying there. it's a little weird. But, but, but that doesn't mean you're bad. It's but just those were, modern, those were right? blog posts that were... Um, Not modern. Uh, Scripture by blog? That's kind of modern. <laughs> it's, it's probably well, the same where that was originally given. But, um, <laughs> I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying it was yeah. weird. But well, I'm it, pretty excited to, to have a lot of the things cleaned up and added in and some of the things that were really shouldn't have been there you know yeah you're excited, but the things I, I'm exciting. Really excited about what's this. the saint john in fact stuff? in fact oh. you you i don't even know if you're aware of, of joseph's final dream dream are you aware of that no that's in there and if that's in the back of the, the teachings of the prophet dies. joseph smith have you ever heard that one no 
Oh, by heavens, you ought to just read it to him. We real don't have quick. time. Oh, they ought to take time for this one. We'll do it in the next one. Joseph, next Joseph what? Joseph Smith's. The, the next interview I do next week with Gary. Oh, with. Um, What's his name? Matt Lomeyer. Matt, yeah. Oh, okay. So, um, jo just Joseph Smith's stream, ask him about that, but it's basically the night before he dies in Carson's okay. jail as a dream. What but section is it? Do you know? I don't know because okay, I haven't had the hard copy yet. What's the St. John stuff, really quick? That's, that's fabulous. That is the Gospel of John. Um, that we still have the Gospel of John as is found in the New Testament with Joseph Smith's editions, but uh, this was basically a direct revelation from the Lord that this needed to get done. And uh, Denver started to do it with, you know, his Greek dictionary and trying to figure out, okay, going from the original and making like a literal translation. Where's the that, original but, come from? Uh, there's the Gospel of John in Greek. Oh, okay, but no one's translated it? Well, no, it's what's known as the Gospel of John in the New Testament, okay? So that's, that's, what you have in the New Testament is like King James version of a translation off the Greek version of the Gospel of John, and now we have it in English, okay? What, what Denver was asked by the Lord to do is, there's actually some because of the the lack of inspiration of who's translating you don't always get the correct intent of what the author was doing when you're going from the languages so denver was told by the lord you need to um, redo the gospel of john even though we're still keeping the original and he doesn't explain what but he said he was about ready to give up because it was so difficult he thought i can't do this he prayed to the lord and all he says is i was given the means whereby i was able to to do it and he did it within a very short period of time and it was also on his blog under the download section you can find it there and I would recommend people read that it is very um, very beautiful very enlightening and helps you understand eternal progression a little bit more does it add a ton to what's already there in John Ooh, it, it, not a ton but it, it sure crystallizes and clarifies some issues. Are you going to yeah. stick that in place of John? No, no, we're still leaving. At some point? The original John, because there are yeah. still things to learn from that. But okay. um, it's... I, it, I love the, the new John. It's, it's, it's fascinating. So it, it kind of, you read that in place of Matthew, Mark, Luke, John? Both. Okay. You can read, I read both. 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 Okay. okay. Yeah. Both. Okay. Um, uh, I know I have a couple more questions that are important. Um, no, you're done. What? Are you're you done. done? <laughs> you're done. I'm not done. Let me just think. I got what? a couple. Oh, homosexuality. Same sex attraction. Traditional. Same sex are attraction there gay has or not been. Members of your movement? I, I, I would If know. they are, they're not saying anything. Okay. But I would say your traditional. It hasn't been a topic that has been addressed a lot or real blatantly but I will just say in the eighth talk he talks about marriage or the ninth talk the ninth talk okay in order of importance he gave these talks right the ninth talk is about marriage Next and in one. that wait, 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 I'll just say this we're, we're, we're he true. starts with he starts one with man one woman marriage. Adam and Eve are in the image of yeah, God that right. is the image of God that's right Adam and Eve yeah male female Hmm. Is it like a big sin? Is there like ex is there excommunication in your movement for sin? There's no excommunication. There's no. There's nothing to get excommunicated from. So a, a gay or lesbian person could be a part of your movement. Uh, a gay or lesbian person who would be acting out on that would be required to do just like all of us have to do. You have to still repent and live God's word in the scriptures. But they could go to house church and come to your conferences. Sure. And sure. Take the sacrament. Uh, I, I haven't had this experience, so I really don't right. know. Is the sacrament ever withheld from anyone? Yes. The sacrament is for people that have been baptized. So when the scriptures talk about don't let those who are unworthy partake of the sacrament, it's not, it's not, oh, did you commit a sin last week? If you read the whole what that's given in, it's about that you do not let those who have not taken upon them the name of Christ through baptism and... Okay. You know, entered into that covenant. That's what that's really about. Hey, you're getting you know, close now. Close. Word of wisdom. Can you drink beer? 
there are people in the movement that do because they because the word of wisdom says mild drinks of barley mild, yeah. right yeah right so there are beer drinkers yeah. yes and so wine drinkers because you can do wine in your sacrament um yeah but if you know the word of wisdom is given not as a command but as a word of wisdom right so our personal thing we've chosen to still be very traditional in that so we only use wine for the sacrament because We're really about if you look our at, family but there are others that use it yeah the word of wisdom says to use yeah. wine for sacraments. So I would say weddings and um, for me, for me. I don't want to speak for everybody, but for me, it's weddings and the sacrament. So there's no official interpretation for everyone about the word of wisdom? No. No. But I would, obviously, you're not trying Could to Could come in the future, or... but hasn't yet. Okay. There's um, a lot coming in the future. Strong drinks. What about coffee is, and tea? Uh, That's pretty open right now people are yeah I, I think people are I think the interpretation for a lot of people and again it's hard for me to speak I can't speak for everybody somebody might be sitting out there going oh that was a terrible answer um, most of these they're going to say that about yeah but especially so, these quick ones coffee and tea I would say for me do my best I am leaning toward that it's the temperature because of what that can do the esophageal cancer and the killing of bacteria that it's more about the how hot so when it says hot so drinks, temperature yeah so iced coffee iced tea would be well, less you of could a even drink for I, me. I, I I don't know I don't know that's just me that's what I've come to my conclusion but there's people who don't there's people who do next <laughs> any other important teaching or initiative that is worth calling out and focusing on next time We've talked yes. about temples, we've talked about scripture, we, you, you do conferences with... regularly. You might want to clarify a fellowship, or what, what is a fellowship, what happens within a fellowship. And speak with Matt, uh, just because I know we're out of time, speak with Matt about the covenant. And you can have his take on also the scriptures and the covenant, how it leads together. But There was a covenant that was released in this last general conference. Is there was that what a you covenant mean? that yeah. was received in, yes, in September. Right. And people like either voted... To accept it or not. Right. Mm -hmm. And it had to do with the, the scriptures. It's why the scriptures there. were prepared. I was watching it on YouTube. Were you? Yeah. He should, so, he should yeah. have been there. Ask, oh, ask Matt more about that. Because that, that's really the big deal of what's going on is the scriptures and the entering in the covenant. And this is all preparation for having the right and obligation connected with the New Jerusalem, with Zion, with gathering Israel. But it's heavy responsibilities to live according in word, thought, and deed what is given to in Scripture. That's why the scripture ha Scriptures had to be honored. You must show God that you honor the word that He's given to you so He will give you more. And that you're also willing to live that which He has given you. And you, you have respect for what He has given you. And then part of the covenant was to guide your life by those Scriptures. Is the covenant in your Doctrine and Covenants? Was it added to it so people it can read be. the covenant? It will yes. be. It, when, in, in December when yeah. it gets published. Yeah. So it'll be published in December. Right. And That's this the is plan. like something that people are signing up for, committing to. Amazon, I guess it'll be through the, you know, how you can yeah. get the book. Oh, you're saying the scriptures will be available. Yes. The, the covenant co the was. The covenant hopefully will be in there. But the scriptures, they're hoping to have them ready by December? Yes. By yeah. next month? Yes. The first version of the, the first version of the Christ. Buy it. You won't want to miss it. Yeah, leather bound. <laughs> no, that's coming, but no, they're, not they're, the they're first. They're going to do edition. the first edition um, without the onion paper and, and the leather because Onions. you know there there might be a few adjustments that we need to make. So we'll talk about the covenant with Matt, and you guys meet just really quickly. You meet on Sundays at people's homes. Yes. Not every Sunday, more like every other Sunday. Well, everybody's different. Some fellowships meet yeah, every week. True. Some meet once a month. Fellowships fellowship, like a ward, basically? It's a group. who you've decided to It's a group of Can you kick people out with. if you don't like people in your fellowship? Can you boot them? You know what? Every fellowship governs themselves. Okay. How many are in your fellowship about? We've got about 30. Yeah. Including children? Yes. No. Including children? 35. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna say. And there are people living close to you, basically. Pretty well, much. Yeah, within within Pacing up to forty Orem. minutes. Up to Salt Lake. And we got some from Salt what Lake. What are the so. main components of a fellowship meeting? Sacrament. 
Bread and wine. Prayer. Singing. Hymn book, our hymns, lessons, Mormon hymns. Yeah, we use Mormon lessons, hymns. But. Discussing tithing and, and uh, the needs of the people. And so and people would give to support other people in the fellowship. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is there money given across fellowships? Is there a central pool it, of money? No for central tithing? pool. Money could be if the fellowship agreed that somebody needed help, they could, but. But it's mostly for that would be like a one time, but you know, like we have a single mother in ours that has six children. And uh, so we, we generally focus ours on, and a couple of, you know, students who are struggling, things like that. What about garments? Um, that one. Wow, you yeah. really are just like firing yeah. the questions. You said you were, you've had three yes more about no. eight times. Garments, <laughs> yes or no. What about garments? What, what do you mean do you wear garments? garments? It's you up know, to the individual. Half the people have taken them off and half the people still wear them. Yeah. Are there teachings about the garments? No. Are the is it so we don't know you don't know if they're God wants them or well, not? Or well, if okay, I would say this. I would say this. Um, you know, there may be people in this movement that don't have the same respect for the temple. But I have heard Denver and I know my own feeling. I do have respect for the LDS temple and the covenants I've made. And I know that Denver de did, and he's always honored his covenants. I've honored my covenants. I don't think I, have, I haven't, I've never I don't consider myself, myself having broken my covenants. And I feel I value. And I didn't make my covenants with the church. I made my covenants with God. Yeah. And I value what I received, even though I don't think it's the completion. I, even though I don't think it's the full thing what God w wants to give, I think there's much to be learned and benefited from to teach and prepare me. And so I do have respect for the temple. But there's no teaching about the garments, whether they are what God wants or not. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Has anyone other than Denver produced scripture that's been canonized? Uh... Not yet. Well, there is, we do have in, in the new scriptures, there's something called the prophet's prerogative that was written by somebody else. Um, is that appendix or is that a it, section? Yeah, whether you call that a revelation. I, personally, I don't call that a revelation, but it's, a, it's an important concept that's It's found like a section, that. right? Yeah, mm. and, it, it, and it, it teaches it, that it's a dis... It's an appendix, right? Appendix. Right. It teaches that, that a dispensation head has certain rights to do things some flexibility rewriting to that section uh, 20 which is guiding principles for people as they come into and, and that will be written by uh, people other than than Denver. yeah there is one there is something that still is not yet completed that will be done that yeah. will replace because section 20 was how to govern a church yeah. and this isn't a church Last question before I ask you to bear your testimonies. Someone's saying something about a, a rule book or guidelines or something. That's what we just talked What's about. What's it called? Guiding, guiding principles. Guide, guiding That's principles. section 20. Yeah. Replacing, replacing section, 20. section 20. And so people are asking, has there been controversy or difficulty coming up with that? Yes, and the reason why is because... Um, Talk louder. Denver was instructed by the Lord that he cannot participate. So he wants the people to learn how to to rise up and become one with God and receive these instructions. So he's encouraging others to, to get revelation. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, that's kind of cool. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. What's he like? Really quickly. Good guy? Bore, boring? Okay. He's a cross between Bruce R. McConkie and uh, Jay Golden Kimball. He swears? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, no F-bombs though, right? No, 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 no. no, no, no. no it's no, just in hell. Yep, yep. B-A. Yeah. Yeah. B-A-S? No, I haven't heard that. I don't think I've heard that one. It's mostly just damn. Oh, wait, he has said that one before about his, no, no, no. I was going to say about his colon. No, no. I don't know if he has. He's had a colon. He's had a. He had a bunch of his colon taken out and he made a joke about it. So he's had cancer? Yeah. Uh, no, no, it was something else. Yeah, I don't know. Infection yeah. or something. Yeah. I, I don't know. But he, he he can be extremely sober, but then other times he, he can uh, um, open up with humor 
and I, I you know I, what's funny is that language and stuff that he uses it, it actually turns a lot of you know like strict Mormons off and here's here's the beauty of it I think that part of it is intentional because like I said already it's not about him if you can't hear the message past yeah. the delivery you know so if the little swear word is going to bother you see there's a test for you can you look past that because after all John the Baptist was considered a wild man so was uh, Enoch it's not about the Lord the Lord challenges you because he tests your paradigm and he wants to see can you hear the word of God despite who I send as a messenger in fact Denver always says you can loathe me <laughs> you can you don't have to like me there's nothing about me you have to like but the message is something different there are comments here about like why does the restoration keep needing to be restored um, so I mean I think that's a valid question I don't expect you to answer that but is it possible Denver or this movement could go astray and there could be a new a new you know restoration is that possible if the pe anything is possible okay. because until a work is done it's not done okay so where is this heading this is heading to hopefully the hope is to, to establish Zion and prepare a place and a people who Christ right. can come to, but right? But do we have to rise up to do that? Yes. And a physical Zion where everyone's yeah. moving to right. this, a and, central right. city. That's yeah. what it's if, moving towards, right? Right. And Eventually, if people don't yeah. repent, because Are look you coming? What, I don't know. Because Enoch, <laughs> Enoch, what Enoch did wouldn't have worked unless people responded to what Enoch yeah, right. said. So it's up to whether... So the God will, keep, God will keep doing this until we get it right. Right. But my personal feel is is I just feel there's too We're many kind of running out of signs time. of the times of what's going on. I mean, how long physical is, signs that is there going to be the means to do it? I mean, it would be very difficult to do this if all civilization broke up and it was just pure chaos. You know, it'd be very challenging to to do this. And you think that's the way the world's heading? Yeah, absolutely. It's yeah. like a what's that scripture that talks about? A garment that is waxing old, or yeah. are you guys preppers a little bit? Are there a lot of preppers in the movie? Hey, I'm going to bear. Don't go long I'm going to this. bear my testimony <laughs> this way. I'm bearing my testimony. This now. is your final testimony. This is my final testimony. All right, everyone. Uh, this is Kirk Strong's final final testimony, testimony. to end this interview. Go, yes. Kirk. And it's the prepper I, thing that got you going. Yeah, I, I was a prepper. In fact, I was uh, so into it that I would get asked by families and wards and stakes to come and make a presentation. I had the whole thing Size laid out. Yeah, yeah, everything. Okay. But we weren't uh, members of anything like a vow. or No, no we weren't yeah, like that. Yeah. We weren't going into tent cities. I know what cities. he meant. By, no, I know uh, what he means. No, We're not no, like that. No, just, no, we just took... Food storage. Food storage. Food storage. Food storage. And... The best way to do it and studied and researched. Well, I'd spent a lot of money, too much money, evidently. And, and so I asked Karen, I said, hey, I want to spend a little bit more money. And she says, oh, don't, don't we have enough stuff? And I said, well, I don't know, hon. Um, do you ever have enough? And that's the problem with, with preppers is there's never enough. I mean, and so we decided to fast and pray. And this goes back a few years ago. She'll tell you the date and everything because she always, always remembers things like that. But we fasted and prayed. And, and then we were walking around our, uh, our block as we normally do. And when we, I got to a certain point, I was, said, you know, I think I've got an answer to that question. Uh, do we need more food storage? And she said, well, I, ha I have an answer too. And so I said, well, what, what was your answer? Who went first? Do you remember? I who can't went? remember. But I, I think it was me, and I said, I, I was told we, we don't need any more food storage. And she said, exactly. And she said, and I was told what we do need. And I kind of said, so was I. And she said, we're not spiritually prepared. And, and I said, I know, and that the Lord has not been very complimentary of us because the two of us, as we've explained to you today, we had all of our T's crossed, all of our I's dotted, all of our merit badges to be the best LDS couple, <laughs> you know. And the Lord let us know that that did not impress him at all. 
and it shook us to the point that it took us several weeks and months to figure out where do we start rebuilding this because we have made we don't need any more food storage i don't even know how that's going to play into the second second coming they made it very clear you are not prepared for what's about to happen you are not prepared that's when we started over and when we started over it left the door open for all the things we've talked about today and i bear witness to you that the Lord did speak to us and that the Lord has been working with us and I would not have given up all the things that I've given up to date if I did not believe with all my heart, with all my mind and my might and my strength that these things were not true. Do I have a perfect knowledge? No. Do I have a knowledge where I've been spoken to by the Spirit? Yes. I suspect even when people get an angel that comes to them and speaks to them, I suspect that if you talk to them in a year or two, they're going to second guess that one too because that's just the nature of mortals. I have had spiritual confirmation of the things that we've talked about other than the details such as some of the questions you've asked. I know Denver is an authorized messenger. I know that. Okay. Thank you. Before you close, are there people leaving the movement? Are there people who are in it but then lose their faith in it? Sure, sure. It? sure. A sure. lot or a little bit? I, we have no I don't idea. Know. I don't but know. You've seen people come and go? Probably after this podcast, a whole bunch will leave. Or join. <laughs> or join. I think you're going to leave. Or flock to it. <laughs> Flock well, to it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously there are. There are people that we know. I know a handful of people who, when we took the covenant in, uh, in the new scriptures in the covenant, for them that was, you know, oh, I don't, you know, it, they didn't have the faith to go that far. Um, and so they opted out. I don't know who all those people are, but I do know a, a couple. And so I'm sure that that happens. But it's kind of like uh, Gideon's army. You know, you can start with 30,000, and then what does he go down to 10? Or I, I forget. And in the end, he's down to 300. Numbers don't matter. It has no bearing on anything to me. But you're right. As people leave, there's probably others who, who come in. Because trying to find the Lord's sheep, and his sheep hear his voice. So, you want Final me? testimony. Okay. Before I said, is, okay is it okay to give her the last word? She'll take it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Karen Strong. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Karen Strong giving you her final testimony. I had to have that last name Strong so that I could deal with him. No. Um, before I give that, I just want to say one more little plug for the website zionsreturn.org and just tell you that that is about 10 to 12 families. Remember, there's no institution nor, nor organization, so anything that gets done in this movement, individuals just kind of have to take it upon themselves to do it. And this was the brainchild of a friend of ours that asked us to help be involved, and it really gives a good summary for somebody to say what is going on in this movement, and you can get as deep into reading as you want. And that's So that's sciencereturn.org. Is that Denver approved? We don't have to prove things from Denver. That would yeah. make him roll over and just want to No, this scream. is grassroots. You don't, you don't get instructions. He does not instruct or give commands. No commands. No, he teaches. He's a teacher, and you respond. And if you look up Enoch, you'll find out that was the way Enoch approached things, too. And then I said earlier also that if you want to hear the talks that he gave to, that Denver gave to the Christians um, in the United States, it's um, Christian Reformation 500, the numbers, 500. Five zero zero. Christian Reformation 500 years info and then if you really want to read the the most important things that Denver has given as talks you would go to denversnuffer.com then you would go to the downloads page and then you'll see the 40 years in Mormonism that's the 10 talks and you will see the testimony of John is on there not me though not your not different me, John. John right the okay. testimony of St. John okay um so I'm pasting all these in the comments. Okay. So um, anyway, I, I just want to say 
what do I want to say? I hadn't even thought about this before. Um, I hope that it is clear to people that uh, this is not an institution. It's not a church. There's no hierarchy. There's no prophet in the sense of what you think of President Monson as a prophet. Um, this movement is full of people who love Jesus Christ, who have heard a message delivered that resonated with their heart and soul. That when they heard it, they said, I hear the words of God in what is being spoken. And as I told my parents one day when I was trying to explain to them, the God that Denver teaches about, that's the God that I've always known. That's the God that I have believed in all of my life. And the wonderful thing is that God has not abandoned us. And I was beginning to feel that we had been abandoned. And it wasn't making sense to me anymore. And it confused me because nothing meant more to me than the gospel of Jesus Christ, even though I was conflating that with the church. It really was because God meant everything to me. And I can tell you and bear witness to you that God is moving his hand again for the second time to finish off the work that he began. The heavens are opened. He has sent an authorized messenger and he is teaching us the things that are required to be known and done by us individually out of our own free will, with nobody compelling, nobody threatening, nobody forcing, nobody controlling, but you of your own self responding to the voice of God. And God has offered a covenant again to those who desire to be part of his family and to work, to labor, to prepare for the return of Christ. And that is my witness. Beautiful. And I invite you. Me personally? To look into it. Look into the camera and invite the listeners. Oh, I invite you to look on? into it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Bruce writes, excellent podcast, very sincere folks. Wendy writes, what a great and courageous couple. God bless on your journey and may you someday see the face of the Lord. That's what Wendy Thank says. You. Thank, Thank you, Wendy. Um, yeah, so I just want to thank you both for coming on, let you know that you're delightful. Thanks for having us. You're inspiring in many ways. And uh, I think there's so many cool things that I like more about this movement than what I experienced in the church. So I hope you guys are super successful. I hope things don't go south. I hope people have healthy, happy, positive experiences, and I hope it continues making people happy and bringing joy. So that's my, that's my blessing. Thank you. To you guys. <laughs> Thank you. It's been that great. Yeah. Thanks it's been for the wonderful. invitation. I didn't know what to expect, but thoroughly I'm not so today. bad, right? No, you're not this, so bad. I'm not so this evil. This was so fantastic. Bad. You guys are great. I knew your last questions were going to be the hardest. And I were they the hardest? I can't wait I till I get to ask you those it, questions. Yeah, we can do that. We, yeah, you can, uh, you can ask them. We'll do an interview. It's not that there weren't tune answers in. to every one. It's that you're like the speedy bullet. Answer this, answer this. Tune in, tune in next time where they interview me. All right? <laughs> there you um, go. No, I, I just ran out of time. I'm late for dinner. Yeah. But, um, okay. Just want to thank all my listeners. Uh, thank you for joining us today. A lot of you, we had up to 150 people listening at a single time. We've had probably 10,000 listeners throughout the course of this interview. You stuck with us a long time. Thank you so much. Uh, we want to thank everyone who supports Mormon Stories to make it possible. Today was Giving Tuesday, November 28th. There's still time. If you appreciate uh, Mormon Stories, the Open Stories Foundation, and what we do, we really appreciate your support. Donations make this all possible. Uh, all donations are tax deductible in the U.S. and go towards keeping the podcasts alive and uh, help us support our mission so please do support us, um, but it's not priestcraft. 
Uh, and um, <laughs> and uh, stay tuned for more good stuff. We're going to interview um, next week uh, another member of the movement whose wife is uh, a blue blood in Mormonism, and we'll talk about that uh, maybe next time. But uh, we're gonna we're gonna probably interview a few people about their experiences. Hopefully, building so that we won't be repeating all the same information, but but kind of building and digging into a few other things that we weren't able to cover today. But thanks for joining us. Thanks for your support. Thanks to all the listeners who joined us live. Your comments and questions made this a lot more interactive and interesting. You guys all take care. Uh, find joy and goodness out there. And we'll see you guys again soon on Mormon Stories.